This is the Monday weather briefing for August 12th, 2013. My name is Steve Bodner. I am a forecaster at the National Weather Service in Spokane, Washington. As always, forecasts are subject to change, so please check our website for the latest forecast. Looking at the overview for the week, thunderstorms will be possible once again today through Tuesday, but the intensity and coverage will be on a downward trend, especially by Tuesday. Dry and warmer weather will return for the midweek. Another Pacific trough will move across the region Thursday night through Saturday, bringing the next round of showers and a few thunderstorms, cooler temperatures, and breezy winds. This system will depart to close out the weekend and start of the new week as drier westerly flow settles over the Pacific Northwest, delivering dry conditions and seasonal temperatures. For this afternoon and evening, thunderstorms are expected once again to impact the majority of the mountainous regions, with very little chances in the southwestern basin and Wenatchee area. The yellow outline marks the location where a few stronger storms will be possible, potentially producing moderate hail and strong wind gusts. In addition, some storms will bring the potential for heavy rains, but quicker storm motion and a little bit of drying of the atmosphere suggests the threat for flash flooding in the Cascades is not as high as in the last few days. By tonight, the threat for thunderstorms will end over the Cascades and good portion of the northern mountains. However, a wave tracking out of northeast Oregon will bring another round of nocturnal thunder across the southeast Washington and Idaho panhandle. Given the current track, the highest threat for storms overnight will be in the yellow outlying oval with lower chances in the remaining areas outlined in red shading. These storms are not expected to produce a lot of rainfall. With that threat for storms across the south, Pendleton has issued a red flag warning for northeast Oregon and into the Blue Mountains of Washington. This is where fuels are more receptive to fire starts. By Tuesday, the threat for thunderstorms will end for central Washington, but remain a threat across the Idaho Panhandle and small sections of the Northeast Mountains and Southeast Mountains of Washington. Dry and warmer conditions will finally arrive around midweek, and here is a look at what temperatures can be, which temperatures can be expected in that time frame, with Thursday being the warmer of the two days by about a degree or two. The next weather system will impact the region Thursday night through Friday. The cold front associated with the system will be reaching the Cascades Thursday night, then slowly passing east through eastern Washington and northern Idaho through the day on Friday. The weather system will take on a much more typical track from west to east. As a result, the threat for thunderstorms is not as high, and westerly flow accompanying this wave suggests very little precipitation in the lee of the Cascades and across the basin. The green shading outlines the locations where the highest precipitation chances will occur. And given the current timing of this front, the front will arrive in far southeast Washington and the Idaho Panhandle, close to peak heating on Friday, so I imagine this is where the highest threat for thunderstorms will exist at this time. Lingering instability left over the northern mountains on Saturday will also keep a small threat for isolated th thunderstorms, mainly in the afternoon and early evening hours. Otherwise, most locations from Wenatchee to St. Mary's can expect breezy winds and dry conditions. The winds for Friday and Saturday will be increasing with the system, between 10 and 15 miles per hour with gusts up to 20. A few of the windier sites like the Gorge, Wenatchee Valley, River Valley, the Kittitas Valley, the Lower Columbia Basin may experience uh, isolated gusts up to about 30 miles per hour. Not damaging winds by any means, but while this will increase the potential for spreading wildfires, the good news is that temperatures will be cooling and RHs will be rising, so extreme wildfire conditions are not expected at this time. A look at the week's forecast for Wenatchee indicates a slow warming trend through midweek with low probabilities for precipitation until the frontal passage. This will be followed by seasonal and dry conditions to close out the weekend and start of the next week. The solid red line in this image is the temperature forecast, the dash is what is normal, and this is similar for the blues, but that's indicating the low temperatures. The trends observed at Wenatchee are similar on the other side of the region indicated here by the Lewiston forecast graph. This is the 8 to 14 day outlook from the Climate Prediction Center for next week, August 20th through the 26th. Precipitation chances look below normal for much of the Pacific Northwest and temperatures carrying a higher signal for near to above normal. 
So to summarize, we'll be monitoring thunderstorms today through Tuesday with the threat migrating east with time and decreasing in intensity. Dry and warmer conditions finally arrive around midweek. However, the next weather system impacts the region Thursday night through Friday, bringing a chance of showers and a slight threat for thunderstorms. Again, this will be a totally different scenario than what we've been experiencing the last few days, with very little precipitation in the lee of the Cascades and Basin. Then we'll be returning to a dry seasonal conditions to close out the weekend and start of the next week. Here is how you can stay informed and get the latest information from the National Weather Service. Go to our website, weather.gov forward slash Spokane, or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. As always, our forecasts are available 24 hours a day on NOAA Weather Radio. Thank you for tuning in to this special weather briefing.